Talk about coffee, ja, det skal jeg klare. So, welcome to this uh, subscription video, Tasting with Friends. Uh, actually, I don't have any more friends, so I'm alone today, but I hope that is fine. Uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, May coffees, uh, which we're going to send out to all of you. And since I'm in between a lot of travel, I've just been to Colombia. I'm going to Colombia again uh, to work on my farm. Uh, I actually didn't have time to invite anyone uh, to come here and taste the coffees with me. But I know these coffees really well myself, as they are from uh, Colombia and also from Honduras. So we're going to taste three really good coffees today. So this is the time of the year where uh, a lot of the coffees we have were actually harvested last year and we're just about to wait on new coffees that are uh, on a boat somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean in a container and on their way to Norway. So we're expecting coffees to come from Kenya, from Ethiopia, from El Salvador, from Honduras uh, within the next month or so. So next month's uh, subscription you'll have some new coffees to look forward to. But this means that uh, the coffees that we have in-house at the moment, they are uh, from last year. And a lot of people question whether they are fresh or not, if they're in season or not. Well, we have to think about coffee as a seasonal product, of course. But uh, what's important to me is that the coffees taste fresh. So, for example, I can go to Colombia and buy a coffee or two coffees. Uh, where one uh, will taste woody when it arrives in Norway two months later and the other one will stay fresh for over a year uh, because they were produced differently. For instance, if a coffee is dried really quickly in a dryer, uh, those coffees tend to stale and get old much faster than a coffee that is dried on the shade and stored in grain pro bags. And this is part of the reason why I'm traveling a lot to Origin to make sure that our coffees stay fresh for a long time. So. You might argue that the coffee that uh, turned old after two months, even though it uh, was woody tasting before it came to Norway, uh, is out of season already because it has a woody taste. And all coffees will get a woody taste eventually. It's just a matter of time. And uh, it's a matter of uh, the cellular um, structure of the beans and how the beans were dried and stored, whether it will happen after two months after it was harvested or 16 months after it was harvested or even two years. I've tasted some coffees that taste fresh after two years. So for me, seasonality is not such a huge uh, subject anymore. It's more of a freshness uh, subject for me. Does the coffee taste woody or not? Does it have a sweetness? Does it have the attributes that it uh, had when the coffee was fresh? And if all those boxes are uh, yes, the coffee tastes good, it's fresh, it's sweet, then I feel that we still can send it out to our customers and, and roast it and sell it. So what do we do if we do get a coffee that turns woody? Well, we actually have a product that we sell in our coffee shop and we also sell to some of our bigger restaurants like Restaurant Noma. They have a hundred chefs that needs coffee every day. So we actually sell the kind of not so good coffees to them for cost price. So uh, that's a product that we only sell to them and we sometimes have it in our store. We call it test roast and it's sold in a, in a unlabeled bag, uh, unbranded bag for cost price. So that means we don't have to throw the coffee away. It's still, you know, decent coffee. And uh, it means you can get some cheap kind of daily coffee if you need that. Now let's talk about the coffees that we're going to send out because uh, this is a coffee that I know quite well. I've uh, worked on this farm and with this farmer for many years now, since 2012. And I actually spend two months every year, at least on the farm now, because uh, I stay at Elias's house when I work on my own farm, Finca El Suelo in Colombia. So the coffees we're going to send out today, two of them are from Finca Tamana in Pital, Huila, Colombia. And we can start with the first one which is uh, Katura. Katura is the variety. It's the traditional variety that was very, very common in Colombia until five, six years ago when they have a huge leaf rust outbreak and uh, the farmers started changing to resistant varieties such as Castillo and Variedad Colombia in, uh, 
in a much quicker way. So I think at the moment 60 or even more percent of the varieties planted in Colombia are Castillo or Variedad Colombia. The Catura is the traditional variety that they have been growing for many years because of its quality. It's a Bourbon mutant, so it's a short tree uh, and it's producing quite a lot of cherries and the quality is pretty good. Uh, but it really depends on where it's grown. I've tasted Caturas that are terrible and I've also tasted Caturas that are really good. And also from this farm, uh, the Catura didn't really taste good two years ago because the trees had a lot of leaf rust. Now they've kind of recovered, so now it's tasting fruity again and sweet. And uh, we have done something special to this one. We have actually separated the screen size. So screen size is actually the whole size on a metal mesh and those metal meshes are always used to sort coffee beans before they're exported. And you can decide whether you want screen size 17 and up, 16 and up, 15 and up, 14 and up and so on. And these numbers relate to the, the size of the beans. So the first coffee that we're going to send out to everyone uh, subscribing to espresso and filter one bag is the Katura variety from Tamala, screen size 17, which means uh, it's screen size 17 and up. So the big beans that would correlate to a double A from Kenya, for instance. And as expected from this farm, this coffee is always really, really sweet because they only harvest the ripest cherries. And this year, this is actually the July-August 2018 harvest, but it's the freshest one we have from Colombia. It just arrived a couple of months ago. And this is actually uh, the most fruity this coffee has ever been from this farm. It's not always been like sweet and so on, but never had that kind of red fruit, stone fruit kind of flavor. But this year, um, they had a really good harvest, long maturation, and uh, the coffees are a little bit more fruity. And what's interesting with the larger screen size is that it has a little bit more intensity and a little bit more acidity, but it's marginal. And for those of you who subscribe to three bags, we will send out the same coffee actually, but the smaller screen size. So screen 15 and 16, we don't buy below 15 because then the coffee starts to get a lot of Quakers, which is those kind of lighter beans that smell like peanuts and uh, you can uh, get a lot of uh, defects like broca, eaten beans and so on. So we separate screens 17 and up and then we have 15 and 16 separate. And the reason why we do this is because it's much easier to roast them evenly when we do so. If we mix all these kind of sizes together, the smaller screens will be roasting very differently than the larger ones if they're mixed together in the same roaster. So that's why we separate them and we always roast them separate. Let's taste a smaller screen then. <laughs> Maybe slightly more herbal, mm, a little bit less acidic. Yeah, definitely. A little bit less acidic and uh, also very sweet. So kind of more uh, bass tones in this one, whereas the screen 17 and up has a little bit more of the treble or mid tones. So uh, same coffee, two different screen size. The biggest one will go out to everyone and then the smaller screen size will go also to the ones who subscribe to three bags. Now I have a cup in the middle that we're also going to taste. And that's uh, also a Katuayi from the Caballeros. And I know we've sent out this coffee many, many times. But every time we do it, it's from a different farm that they own. Because the Caballeros, they own uh, 150 hectares of land. So they have small farms that are situated in a large area around the mountain. And this particular lot is from a farm they call Cipresses, because they have a lot of cypress trees on the farm. But it's also, interestingly enough, a farm where they have been trying to do organic farming. So it's not certified organic or anything, but they have tried to use cow manure, pulp and uh, no kind of uh, herbicides and pesticides to try to grow this coffee as organic as possible. Whether you can taste it or not, I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Well, it's definitely not worse than their normal katoe, that's for sure. 
but still very recognizable from the Caballeros. A lot of chocolate flavor, kind of a dried uh, fruit flavor, maybe some plums, you know, this kind of bitter, slightly acidic plums, but that are also really sweet. Um, and interestingly enough, it always has this kind of green bell, ple bell pepper flavor that is so characteristic for their Katwai coffees, I think. So three quite similar coffees, I would say. They are uh, all slightly herbal um, and they're all very, very sweet, but you will find a small difference in the kind of fruit flavor you can find. The Katwai being more um, of the kind of dried plums, Whereas the tamana, mm, a little bit fresher and a little bit more kind of stone fruits and red berries, like red currants, but also really, really sweet. So those are the three coffees we're gonna send out to all of you. Uh, Screen 17, Katura from uh, Colombia, from Finca Tamana. The people who uh, subscribe to Two Bags, they will also get a Katuai from Los Cipreses, the farm that is slightly organic from the Caballero family in Honduras. And then the people who subscribe to Three Bags will get also the Tamana Katura, but screen 15 and 16, so a smaller screen size. And I thought I'd do this exercise. First of all, we don't have a lot of coffees in stock at the moment because we're waiting for new coffees, but also we always do this with the screen size but we kind of don't tell on the bag because they taste quite similar and we would just do it to roast the coffee a little bit different but there is a subtle difference and I thought it would be fun for you guys to to see if you can find a difference so when you do taste this coffee side by side please let us know so that we can uh, have some nice comments and see if there is a consensus whether or not the coffees taste like I told them told you they taste like Cool, so the only thing uh, left now is to say that if you like these videos or would like them to be changed or have some questions, please feel free to comment below and we'll try to accommodate your requests. Also, if you don't subscribe to our coffees, you can go to our webpage, there's a link below uh, where you can subscribe to our coffees either as a recurring subscription, meaning it'll just be a monthly thing. You can stop it anytime you like, you can pause it. You can select between one, two and three bags and it's a monthly subscription. You can also give it as a gift to a friend. So that means you prepay everything, freight. So the, your friend will just receive the coffee for three, six or 12 months. And uh, you, of course you can prepay and give a gift for yourself as well. I don't think there's uh, more to say actually. Uh, I'm really looking forward to next month as well because uh, there might be some new coffees on the menu that we have never served before. But time will show because containers sometimes are delayed and so on. So looking forward to presenting next month. See you soon. Ja, det er det.